Welcome back guys, Just Mike here. Anyway, I'm going to try something new. I'm going to try working on a vintage clock, a kitchen clock. And some of them call them parlor clocks. It depends on what you're looking for on eBay, let's put it that way. To see more or less of the clocks. Anyway, the finish is really bad on it and so I'm going to experiment a little bit with denatured alcohol and a steel wool and rub on it. But I'm sure that's not going to be my finished idea of uh, finishing that clock for a simple reason is it is really bad, but who knows, it might surprise me. So anyway, let's get into it. Let me show you this clock. So this clock does tick. It, it'll stop eventually. It does have a nice uh, painting on the glass. This here, let's get a little closer up here maybe. I don't know if you can see that or not it's it's really crinkled and some of the finish has fallen off what I really like about this clock what I really like about this clock is it has this brass work in it that I'll have to pop off it's got a few nails holding it together and they're down here as well on the door or next to the door so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take these screws out to get the door off because I don't want to break the glass. And then I'm going to pull this pin that holds the hands on, take the hands off. This here little time wheel, timer wheel, looks like it's brand new because it's too shiny. That, and that's what uh, causes the alarm to go off which is normally very noisy. Like, I'm not going to make it go off, it's just crazy. And then the sound, well, here we go. <laughs> it don't even want to do it. So let me get this stuff taken off and I'll, I'll start on this metal trim on here, which I think are brass. Now it is a bit of a shame but most of these plates, they have holes all over them and some of them have put, been put in later because the hole will start stripping out. Evidently they didn't know anything about gluing a toothpick or a piece of sliver of wood stuffed in there and they'll tighten it right up. So this looks like a, I don't know what that is. So anyway, we got this off. This here just pulls right off. And that's what triggers it. And right there's a lever that causes it to go up and down and then drop and it'll, it will go off. And this here feels really stiff. There you go. They have it away from the bell, otherwise this would blow your mind. So anyway, this says 5 and 7 eighths there. Let me take this camera off and we'll take a closer look. So it says 5 and 7 eighths there. I can't see what that says. The light's in the wrong way, but you can see it. And it does look pretty clean. Normally these clocks do look clean because they were trying to sell them and purdy them up a little bit. But I found that the springs in here are really sticky and that's the number one thing I need to do is take those springs out. But while I have that out, I'm going to take this whole thing out and clean it. It's nice. It's got the 
spring wire, I guess I call it, or whatever, for the pendulum. Everything looks pretty good, though. Now on this one, this pendulum rod doesn't come off. It's bent right on there. The pendulum itself comes off. It's got that hook on there. And to take this off, I don't see anything in there that's going to hold it. And it's open wide enough. I can just slip this right out of there, I hope. There we go. And I can see spots of oil on, on this here. And I can see drips of oil here and there. So like I say, they just got it run just enough to sell it, which is fine because most people that are buying these clocks, especially in the condition this is, they're buying it to clean up, fix up, whatever. Most people don't buy clocks like this if they want it in their house to show off, I guess we'll put it that way. So anyway, let me lay this down and work on one of these and see what it takes. So what I'm doing is I'm working this under there and loosening the nails. I got this one off and taking this one off. The nail that's here, you couldn't even see it. I was wondering what was holding that bottom and I was able to work this blade down in and was able to pry this nail out or up high enough that I could get it off. Oh, by the way, before you take any of this stuff off, if you have the same thing, get a picture of the way it laid out on here. Because by the time you get this thing finished, you're going to think, well, how did it go on there? And you'll, you'll see the holes, but sometimes that helps to get this thing. Now you see I got that in there, and I'll take the screwdriver. The finish is already ruined. I don't want to scar the wood, but... I get in there and I pry that up and down a little bit to get the nail up high enough that hopefully I can grab it. That wasn't good stuck in there so I bent it a little bit but it'll go right back down when you re uh, install this thing I get a good hold of it first. So there it is. Something that obviously I'm going to clean up. I want to keep an antique look to it. But you can see it does have the brass shining through on that. And I think that's going to look good on this clock. So let me work on these others. Including the lower ones. Let me work on these other ones now, including these lower two, and I'll be back. Okay, I got all the decorations off. I already taken my pictures. Got these off. I went ahead and got the bell undone. The timer undone. And... take that little wire arm off so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the gong out and then I'll go ahead and take those four screws out so I can get those works out of there so this thing's still ticking away this here's just a 
actually it's shiny black there. Uh, Stephen Thomas Clock Company. So that there answers what this clock is. Even though the the dial pretty much said made in the USA. So let me get those out. Like I say this thing just keeps ticking away. On his back, of course. So, like I say, this looks pretty clean. Oh, there, that's. I couldn't see it. It's a little darker or whatever now. Steph Thomas. STUSA So besides a little extra goop and a couple hairs This thing doesn't look bad. Oh look at that key. I didn't know that was there. And it fits a little sloppy, which is sometimes sometimes good because when people start to wind clocks, it's hard sometimes to get these keys back out because they fit too tight. This one feels like it's a little bit too loose, but it is a key, and I might go ahead and order a new one that's a little bit tighter than this. So let me set this aside, and then we'll get right back to this. So on the back here, this here is coming apart. The best I can do to this maybe is put Mod Podge on it because it Mod Podge doesn't normally turn it any darker than what it is already. And so you can still see it. And I'm probably going to pop this back off because when I refinish this, I want it to, I want to save this part of it and I can hand brush this on on here to seal this a little bit better i don't know what this is but eight nine eight one i do believe and it looks like it used to have some more numbers underneath it and you can kind of tell someone's slapped some finish over this clock before and who knows how long ago you can see the original finish here, how, how nice it looks. All this crinkled, whether it's, they slap that stuff on just to try to preserve it and try to, because I do know these crinkles normally are pretty high and they look like they might be filled in. Not that I really care one way or another. So like I say, I'm going to go ahead and pop this back off. It's got a uh, one, two, three, four, five, six nails. So let me work on that. So I didn't notice this before, but there's another paper sticker in here, which I'm going to have to be careful with. It's, you can just barely read what it says. So when I refinish this, I'm going to, have to be very careful with that piece there and hopefully not remove any more than what's there. Personally, I think that's something that adds value to the clock. Whether it does or not, I don't know, but I love it when it's in there. And this is an oak clock. You can tell where they smeared trying to put another finish on. Then you got your original finish that's really wore off in here. It does have a nice grain look to it. And I'm sure this is without any finish. Looks like it might be a little bit of stain there or something, but like I said, I plan to clean this up. And it's starting to get dark out, so I'm not going to do it. And it's going to probably rain tonight. But like I say, I'm going to try some of that denatured alcohol and a steel wool and just see what that what it does to this here whether it can help straighten that finish out or what but just the same I think I want to strip it all the way down because someone slapped something on here 
and get it back to a nice fine finish. Because this is messy and we're gonna fight off the rain, I hope. Anyway, let's get into this. I'm trying out this denatured alcohol on this really bad uh, varnish that's on here and like I showed you it was slopped on here on top of what's here this is just an experiment because I've seen this before and I've done this on things that weren't all crinkled like this and it seemed to turn out okay Now I know I got it kind of heavy of the stuff. Give it time to work a little bit. Considering it looks like it might be doing something, but like I say, I got that varnish on top of the other varnish. Yep, that's smoothing right out. So pretty much what it's doing is just remelting what's on there. And if you weren't as thick as I am, you'd probably dry this off and either give it another coat, a spray coat on here, or you can strip it all the way down. Yeah, it's turned out pretty good so far. And of course I didn't bring a rag with me so I'm going to have to redo this over again and then take a rag and wipe it off. So let me finish this up on this one side and I'll be right back. So I've been using the, I don't know if it's a 2 aught or 3 aught. didn't matter because I figured it needed some major something done to it. But actually, that, I am really impressed on how well that cleaned up. Com look how beautiful that is compared to the stuff that's on here right now. Let's go over this again. And I'm refinishing this whole clock so I don't care how much I get douched on here. I just know it needs cleaned off. And if you're just trying to tone up some scratches, fix some scratches, you wouldn't go as, as aggressive as I am and how much uh, denatured alcohol I'm using. I did this on another clock that just had some scratches on it and I was doing it very light with this denatured alcohol. And after I got done, I used a stain, a sealable stain, it said, and you can hardly tell where it was at all, where the people have scratched it up. Now you can tell this is definitely a oak clock. Look at that. And that's just a, under five minutes. It doesn't take long and this stuff starts eating it away. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this side and then clean in here. So I'll be right back on that one. So compared to what it was, it really looks good and what I consider stripped. 
What I'll do is I'll let this dry off a bit. Then I think I'm going to try to restain this and see how it turns out. Anyway, let me get over to the rest of the pieces. So I still have this piece to do and this piece. And like I say, I'm going to be very careful and try to keep all this uh, cleaner off of this as I'm trying to get all this clean. I'm not going to do anything at the bottom. The bottom didn't get a second or a coat from whatever they did. Some of it got spilled over, but... And it looks like they used a pre-stained varnish on here because it looks like uh, candy cough drops on some of this stuff. Kind of like that there. So let me get this done and we'll be right back. From this to this. That denatured alcohol works great. And I'm not a rocket scientist. I didn't even think about using that. But after I saw someone on another channel which I can't remember his name but I'm so happy to find out denatured alcohol really seems to clean it up okay I just wanted to make a special note remember this is my clock remember it's your clock that you have experiment and do what you want maybe you can see what I did and learn from my mistakes anyway so far, this is a nice, let's say, light color. There's no way I'd leave it this color. I have a stain around here. I forgot what it was called. But that's what I plan on staining this clock with. And I do know it's a little bit different than what these clocks are normally stained. But it's better natural. And I don't necessarily want to match the clocks that are out there right now. So, the last thing I got to do, which is start to sprinkle outside, but I need to take this, get the glass out, and I notice this one corner, here it is, this one corner here is popping open and closed, so I got to repair that too, and I got to be careful with this. It does have a wood piece in there that makes it stronger. But just the same, I'm going to have to be careful with this so it doesn't fall apart and I'll try to get glue in that area. And I also don't want to mess up this glass. Even though when they, whoever it was that put a coat of whatever on here, they did get it on the glass and it wasn't taken off. It, which is no big, it's glass. And this side has nothing on it. It's your other side that has the paint or whatever. And that's what you don't necessarily want to clean any more than you have to because... The more you clean it, the more the paint, it's not a decal on this one, it's the paint will come off. So I'm going to take this thing apart, get it cleaned, and I'll be right back, which is right back for you guys. Anyway, the stain I decided to use, which I have old stains, so I don't know if they still make it or not. So let me try it out and see what I think. Sneak preview. I'm going to tell you about that clock in another video. On which one's possibly to buy and which one's not to buy because I made the mistake. and bought the wrong one and until I could actually open it up, I had no idea. So this is a gel stain. Let me get it stirred up. So I like the color and it's even putting the finish on this it will turn a little bit darker but I want something a little bit different and to show up the grains so I have to let that dry obviously 
from this to this. So there it is, all stained. So it's just a little bit darker and the oak has really shown up nicely. So now I need to let this thing dry so I can possibly glue some of these parts back on and get it back onto the box that sits underneath this. So I got the case finished. I put a matte finish on it and so it almost looks natural and I didn't do anything special to that tag in there. I went ahead and just glued it down the best I could for places that it was coming up and then I just sprayed over it. It's so dark anyway you can't necessarily see it and when it comes to the movement that was in this clock I'm going to go ahead and take it apart and clean it for a simple reason is it was too clean looking and am worried in so many words that the springs not lubed with the main spring oil and whatnot it does the movement doesn't smell like WD-40 which is a cleaner but then it'll also start corroding it so what is cleaned with I don't know but I'm gonna go ahead and clean it properly so this clock will run for me when I wind it up that's the main thing there so anyway let me start putting the metal pieces on here and I'm gonna look at my phone and try to get this straightened out and so it goes back on the way it was and so I'll be right back after I get most of it on or all of it on. I also wanted to mention because this clock doesn't necessarily say what it is until you get into it on the gong holder I went ahead repainted this black because all that gross black and dirt that was stuck in the letters all that came off halfway decent so I repainted this black enamel and then I highlighted this with gold so it stands out better even though it's going to be hidden by the gong it'll still be in there now I did want to make a couple special notes this trim that goes on here for the fancy decoration I'm not exactly sure what it is it has that maybe brass look to it but on the back I've scratched in a few places and I'd almost want to say it's aluminum or something this here I just soaked pretty good to get that old varnish off that they painted on here but the coloring stain and it looks like it maybe has a brass coating on some of it you can see how some of this looks good some of this looks weird some's lighter some's darker like this here see how dark that is compared to that in which I've brushed this a little bit with a scratchy pad and not that one and the most I could do is get where I got here and also I'm not an expert on this type of a clock the kitchen clock or parlor clock but so I'm told back in the day plywood was very expensive and they thought they had the best thing going and so some of these clocks ended up with plywood in there to give them the more value this here whole piece up here it's plywood and these two pieces here are plywood with that veneer over it and on the back here I guess I can show you I don't know if you can see this or not but you can see where some of this is chipped away and so you got to kind of be careful when you're putting the stuff on or taking the old stuff off try to be careful with these edges because they do come off because the it's starting to uh, become unglued so anyway that's just another special note that maybe this clock's got a little more value because of that back in the day I got this clock because this is my second clock I actually have the metal works and I thought it was unique so that's why I got it well that's what we got so far 
I'm not ready to put the door in yet because I need to clean the glass and install it back on its frame. But so far so good. I do love this metal work that's on there. Now that it stands out compared to this case was what that kind of a black color where all of this blended in. And yes, they did coat over those with their finish that they put on here. And so that, I will admit, had to be stripped off too. But so far I'm quite happy with this. Welcome back guys. This is just Mike here. Anyway, now I'm going to go ahead and clean the works to this parlor clock that I have. I call it kitchen clock because I'm not sure whether they've cleaned it with WD-40 or what. It doesn't have a smell to it, but it has telltale signs that they use something to clean it and possibly it's not cleaned properly. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and take it apart, re-clean it, clean the springs on it, re-lube those in order to make this clock run forever. Let me show you the clock and show you the works real quick. So this is the clock I was working on and the movement here it's ticking away, sitting outside and everything else. It looks really clean, except it does have a little telltale sign of oil or crud dripping off of there. But otherwise, it actually looks pretty clean. Just that whether it's been properly lubed, like I say, I don't know. And this is what I'm mainly worried about, is getting these things out and getting them clean. See, there's some crud there. Really build up bad. Let me, here's a screwdriver. So that just kind of tells you that it's not the cleanest, but I'm happy at least I get got most of the stuff off for me and I'm just going to finish the job. Okay, I went ahead and let down these springs by using this let down tool. You just crank it like you're going to wind it up, pull the little lever back that grabs those gears there and let the friction inside your hand take the spring and undo it and I went ahead I took the screws out I don't know if you can see that or not it's, it's a little bit of cake to the oil and whatnot like I say this is, has been clean each one is semi clean this here the screws that hold this in all of those are loose which is kind of not normal they're usually tight and it takes a little bit to break them out like I say they were all loose anyway I have everything I've done that I can. The most I could take off with was that. This here is what that goes on to here. And this here is what operates the, the alarm when you want it to operate. And it was missing this wire, so I have to make a wire to come down to the alarm system part. Anyway, I'm going to try to take this apart. The plate off. I already, like I say, took the screws out. So that way we can see what's in here and maybe we can get a picture of that too. Some of these wheels look like they're going to be still attached. Oops, springs are messing things up a little bit. Okay, so that one's nice. It, I was wondering how that comes out. It just part of one of the gears. Pay attention to the which way these teeth are pointing when you go to put it back in and of course there's only one way to put this one in and that there's on 
All they'll do is take that clip off. It does have, this is a spring type clip. And so we'll be careful and take that off. Uh, we got a little bit of, let's say dirt that didn't quite get washed off. That's fine. I'm going to take care of that. I can put this back. And now if I want, I can take a picture of this so I can see what the gears look like and try to make sure they go back to where they're supposed to. So let me get a picture of this and then I'm going to go ahead and take this apart in front of you so that way you can see what's going on. So let's pull this apart as easy as possible. This here is the one that counts. This part counts the hour on, let's see, oh, it's still on here. That's the part that goes on here, counts the hour. And also this wire here is a trigger wire where you can pull it and make it go to the next hour or half hour to get your clock adjusted without having to continuously turn the hands around. So anyway, like I've shown you on this one, this is the one that uh, is for the pendulum. Let's take the fan out. That's to slow down the gong. Um, let's come over here. So these actually look pretty good, but I can see where they're not as clean as they could be. But then again, I bet you anything I could oil it and it'd be just fine. But you can see the oil or the cleaner just smeared around that gear there. So let's see if we can pop this off. So it stops destroying our evidence. Oh, I see. That's not going to come off because in here they have a wire that holds this down into place. So I'm going to have to take that wire off. And there's one more over here. So while I was at it, I went ahead and took more pictures, such as this lever right here. It seems to me these are always hard to try to figure out what side of the gear they go on or what area they go in. And that's the same with the alarm here, or this isn't the alarm, this is the gong. So anyway, let's try to pull this apart a little bit more. And that spring plate is important because that's what uh, holds your hands tight. That's the hand shaft. So before I took this apart, I didn't mention it, but I tried to look at where each gear goes through the hole of the plate on either side. And to me, they all looked good. They, they weren't sloppy or anything else. Anytime you see a pin, that's going to be a, an adjustment you need to pay attention to to get your clock to gong and when to stop. And those are the, we'll call it the teeth, the wires that come up, that's where the gong will hit 
and uh, count however many times this has to go around for the hours. And last at least, here this is, and maybe remember that's going to have to go on first. So I didn't disconnect this wire. It's a pretty heavy spring wire for the gong. See if I can flip it off of there. Almost. And I notice it's just a single wrap around to make that strong enough to hit the gong. So let me get these two wires pulled out of here. I'm going to straighten only one side so that way all I have to do is slide in and bend it over and then we'll take that off. So I got those pins out. You still need to be kind of careful with this thing because it's still under a little bit of a load. See that goo there? That's why I say this needs a... and that's real sticky coming out of there. So it's for sure something that needs to be taken out and cleaned. So I'm just going to clean this all together. through the sonic cleaner and you notice the spring isn't really stretching out a whole lot there's a chance it's got its memory here to where it might not have ran for eight days like it, this clock's supposed to so cleaning this you're kind of stretching out like this anyway and that helps get rid of that memory now the spring, for what I can tell at the moment, it just looks like it's dirty. It doesn't look like it has any cracks in it or anything else. So happy about that. Let's get this one off. You can see this one's not wanting to open up too much either. And so that's just... Like I say, tell me it's got a memory of probably not being clean for quite a while and it's used to being bound up. That's another good thing too, is letting these clocks wind down for at least seven days and then wind it up. Don't wind it up every two or three days because all you're doing is keeping this thing all coiled together and then have a chance to open up and lose some of the memory. It was being taught, I guess we'll put it that way. Well, I have my springs cleaned in the Sonic Cleaner, and then I rinse them off good with Dawn dishwashing soap and hot water, and then rinse them off from that. Now I'm going to use this denatured alcohol and the WD-40. The WD-40 is going to get sprayed on the scrubby, and then we're going to be working this and not being afraid to pull this thing straight because that's going to take the old memory out and try to get the the spring have a little bit more life as in make sure it'll run at least eight days and then after I'm done using the WD-40 I'll take a clean paper towel and use a denatured alcohol and try to clean off all that WD-40 that I put on here to clean this thing and I should have a video out by the time this one comes out. You're only going to get just so far when you're cleaning this to where your fingers won't be able to squeeze this open. You go as far as you can. Don't worry about the rest and get as clean as possible. Go ahead and get the denatured alcohol and wipe that WD-40 off. Then I have a, a lube four main springs that I use and which they do have a number of different weights or whatever it is just too confusing me I got one that I think is going to do pretty much everything 
and you don't pour this on the spring you put it on your rag and wipe the spring down with it go all the way in as far as you can and come back and that should be good enough for this or for that I should say so I'm gonna go ahead and just clean this off camera get it lubed up and ready to go into the works that are back here that I have all cleaned right now uh, through the sonic cleaner also ran it through the Dawn dishwash soap uh, with a toothbrush and scrubbed everything in so many words it doesn't look like it because you can see the different colors in here I don't know if it's my type of it's it, it is a actual movement cleaner but for some reason it likes to if you accidentally leave it in too long or whatever it starts leaving a discoloration on the works and whatnot and also before I do anything I'm going to take a toothpick a round toothpick and go through each one of these holes to make sure those holes are clean because those are the more important ones where the gears actually go through so that way this has a better chance of running a longer period of time so on these springs here I got this in lubed already anyway some of you are lucky enough to have a garage or a shop to work in to clean your clocks and if you have a vise on these type of springs it's great to put a screwdriver in here clamp this part to the vise and this way you, you'll be able to turn it whichever way you need it to anyway this way you can take it and get a better scrub than what I'm doing on on your spring in order to besides straighten it out a little bit also to get a deeper clean and also I did want to mention the scrubby that I'm using this here is a X brand I went to the store and I couldn't find any of the real scrubbies this here is <laughs> as rough as my skin maybe I don't know it's, it's really soft uh, I've seen the other guys that they're using a, a rusty brown color I guess we'll say and that seems to scrub these a lot better you don't want to use steel wool obviously because that's going to definitely leave scratches and that's why you don't want a real rough uh, scratchy such as I think the real green ones are pretty rough compared to maybe the brown ones so check that out for the brown ones or just get these cheap ones I'm lucky on this one because normally I mean you can see some discoloration but you don't see what looks like rust on the spring and usually the rust you see on the spring that's not really rust that's the old oil that's that's uh turning into those spots that then makes these things clean together and then they don't want to open like they should be because it's kind of like a shellac on there so anyway I'm going to get settled and start putting this together so as you see I went ahead and put it together off camera the main reason why is everything is located all inside here nothing is on the outside except this lever and this here that uh, operates the pendulum there it is that rocks back and forth on there so that's only only thing off now as you can see I put put these on there and what I did is I held on to this gear here wound it up and after I wound it so far I was able with this clear out I was able to get it around the post and get it on there and then I kept winding it and tightening this because otherwise this spring is so big it's in the way of this gear here for example on this side it has a stop that you had to make sure to get it around so that's why you want to do that and of course be careful you got to make sure to be holding on to this because as you're winding which I will admit I let the use a letdown tool to wind it with but you can use a key but as you're winding you got to make sure to be holding on to that 
as the spring is shrinking and then trying to get this thing tighter around there which uh, worked out good for me and I will admit there's a few gears looking at the phone even there's a few gears that weren't quite quite right and I ended up having one gear on the wrong side or whatever got it moved over so now this is my time side everything seems to be working just fine this is the side that counts the hour and this gear here that actually controls the gong also you would think because it goes through this gear you would think that that would be something that they're spo both supposed to be together that's not the case this here holds still as this is going around and you'll see it moves properly there's a gear that has that barrel type uh, gear in here that's got a little cog on it and that's what makes this thing go around and I installed this wire again this here is if you turn your hands around now your counters off you can push this up you can you can pull this and it'll cause that to come up and when the spring is tight then it'll start gonging as it's supposed to until the next hour or wherever your hour is see it died there let's say it need to go another hour to have the gong right with the hands just pull that until it hits a big slot and that's what's supposed to stop it and pay attention to get this thing to drop down like that inside here let's see if I can show it to you better inside here is a disc with a cutout in it and when this falls down that's supposed to fall down in that cutout and if you don't have that timing right you're going to probably have to either adjust this wheel gear however you want to call it to make it stop properly also make sure your wire is falling down all the way because sometimes this here needs to be bent up a little bit because it's not able to fall any further and that needs to go down that wire in there so it's just those little adjustments like i say when you if you ever put your clock back together pay attention besides how you took it apart and the and the pictures of it once you get together start running it by hand and see what it is that it needs to do or why this is going up and down check all those little things inside there because they all have let's say to do with the timing so there were a couple places i greased that you wouldn't be able to get into which would be mainly your spring where it sets down on i'll still add oil to it And I, I give it more than a drop. I, I like to kind of soak it and then bring it back in. And bringing it back in, it sucks it back up on into the oiler. So you want to do that on every one of the gears. And like I said before, if you get too much oil, it's not a problem. Just make sure to get a tissue and dab it to make sure you don't have oil just setting in here for the dust to collect on even though this clock is a good clock because it does have a door on it so it's not open to the atmosphere like your cuckoo clocks 
which are the main things I work on. So in here I just installed this and let's give it a test. You can see how it just wants to spin by it. I need to loosen the screw and move it closer so it doesn't spin by it. It actually works like it's supposed to. That looks a lot better. I gotta hold it there until I can get it tightened down. What I found normally after cleaning the clock that this here on the wheel will start to squeak or go real slow because it's hanging up. It, it's dragging because it's so clean now. I found a get a toothbrush toothpick just a little bit of oil and coat it just a little bit where it drags on the gear. Now normally I, I would say don't do this because dust collects but so you don't have a headache later. And that should kick just fine for you. I found this in cuckoo clocks and other clocks I've worked on they're not happy unless they have a little bit of lubricant to push around on there to make them slide by instead of you start hearing a skeet, skeet, skeet every time that pendulum goes back and forth. Or like I say, it'll eventually slow down and stop. But that's just my opinion. That's what I do whenever I remember to. Make sure it's lubed up just a little bit. Now for releasing these, what I normally do, I try to reuse them again. I don't think it's that important. It depends on how many of these you're going to do. Go ahead. Oh, we got to turn it the right way first. Go ahead and wind this thing up. And take the tension off of it. Now the tension's off of it. I normally get a real small screwdriver, the end of it, and I'll poke it in here to lift that tab up off of what it clicks on. And if you ruin it, so what? Get another one if you need it. So installing this in my clock, of course this is the alarm, you pretty much just set it in here. You line up with the screw holes. Now you might have to wind this more because it's already hitting the case because that's what these are meant for is just to run eight days and that's why they never have a chance to uh, get any big, get any bigger. I get, I expand the rest of the way or whatever because it's not able to the box is just holding it tight so here I'm just gonna just stuff this wire in there for the alarm now it still needs adjusted And also you got to make sure it's not hanging up on everything. And you can adjust by putting this on there while you're holding that up. Now this isn't supposed to go off until it drops. If it's going off, that means this here 
let's let's just straighten this wire out let's just say that's how long it is now what you want to do is adjust this down a little bit so it's holding it until the hour comes where that'll drop so there I got it bent too much So it should shut off when you turn this a little bit. The thing is, after 12 hours, it's going to go around and do the same thing. So it's best to let this thing run down unless you need to time right away again. And that's why I say you don't necessarily want to wind that thing up in order for it to go off in the middle of the night on here or whatever. So I have the door screwed on and I only had one screw that was let's call stripped in the wood. So it's always good to have a toothpick, cut it down to size or whatever, add a little bit of glue, stick it in the hole, put the screw in, give it a good snug but don't reef on it. And it should be fine. And I think that's the same with the face that goes on here. That there's probably multi-holes multi that this thing has had because it strips out. Why not put a sliver of this in so you don't keep putting holes all over it and holes all over your dial. So let's not forget our spring. It's got that and pendulum. It's got that little piece of wire in there and that's what holds this. Let me pull this out of the way. Put it on the shaft there and it doesn't want to come out because that little wire is there. So let's go ahead and put it in officially. There we go. Slide in there. And I don't know if it makes any difference or not, but I still like to give this a little bit of a snug. Not saying that's going to do anything, but there's a good chance it's going to stay. It's not going to want to come out if you start moving this thing around. Oh, there you go. Sounds pretty good and sounds strong. I don't have it wound up all the way, but that's a good, good sign in my opinion. I don't know if you can see or not, but the pendulum, when you're, it's not important. But if it's sitting a little crooked, it's usually sloppy in here. You just adjust it to where it's flush. So let me get the hands on and the face on and whatnot. And I'll be right back. So for those of you that were paying attention... Or maybe you know how to do these already. I put the springs on backwards so my clock ran backwards, including the gong. Let me show you what I had to do. I did get messed up when I was looking at my pictures, and I and it, it does happen. These springs need to come out this way on both of them. So what I had to do is switch the springs over so they both start here and start wrapping around this way. 
Now I got it done, I can take these back off and get it back in the clock. So I couldn't believe how well this thing ran when I had the springs in, let's say, backwards. Seems to be ticking good now. And listen to that chime. Yeah, right. Wrong clock. So that's it for refinishing this clock and went ahead and got the works taken apart, put back together, taken apart a few more times because of the springs, that kind of stuff. And now it's ticking nice and strong. Very happy I went ahead and took it apart so I could get the main springs, which is the main thing there, uh, lubed besides getting off whatever it was they used for a cleaner, which uh, whatever they did, they did a really good job of it. So anyway, thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to subscribe because it's free. And leave a comment just to say hi or tell me one of your stories about one of your clocks. It's a little quieter now. Anyway, like I said, thanks for stopping by. You guys have a great evening or morning, depending when you're watching this.